is an actress, a writer, a producer, and my good friend. She became a fertility warrior when she froze her eggs, and now she wants to help others. So please welcome Kelly Stewart. <laughs> I just want to say, I, I, I got to give you your flowers because you are so supportive. We talked about friendship. You once told me when I was negotiating my salary for a project, you told me your salary so that I would not get underpaid. And I got what I asked for because of you. And because you deserved it. Thank you. Because you deserved it. I wrote a show called BBF and I sold it to Fox and I knew more about what was going on behind the scenes as a writer, producer. So when it's your turn to get your own show, you called, and there was no way I was not going to tell you every little thing on that contract. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? It's about pay equity, and you know how we say queens fix each other's crowns. There you go, girl. That's it, Kelly. <laughs> Now, let's jump into it. You became a fertility advocate when you froze your eggs at 37, 37 years old. Can you tell us about that? Well, I gave away my best baby-making years to the wrong man. Mm. We know about that. Okay, yeah, y'all heard it. So that's why you moan that way. Because when you're in a relationship, you don't really realize, especially when you have ovaries, you're not just giving away your time. You're giving away your biology. Yeah. And so when you think about it that way, you will get out of that expired relationship mm. a lot earlier. And so when it was over, I called my mom, Mama Stu. She's in Mama the audience. Mama Stu in the audience right there, Mama Stu. And mom gave me all the injections. I was 37 years old, and I got 29 viable eggs. Mm. So they are hanging out in the freezer. <laughs> I never thought I was going to go public about it. But when I learned so much about, you know, all the infertility underlying conditions like fibroids, endometriosis, PCOS, yes. I knew I needed to use my story to help others. You did. And it's so funny that you say that. How ironic. Because Jennifer Aniston just came out and she said that she wished somebody had told her to freeze her eggs and now she can't do it. It's too late. We don't talk about this enough. We don't. We suffer in silence far too much. Yeah. You know, and, and the reality is, is that it was never our business what was going on with Jennifer Aniston. It was always her story to tell. Right. But because there's so much shame and there's so much guilt and people feel like their body is failing them, yeah. it's not as easy to really open up about it. So I think one of the things that we learned from Jennifer's story is to not judge. Mm -hmm. When people get married and the first thing you say is, when are you going to have a baby? Yeah. You don't really know what's going on. You know, you have to be very mindful that there may be journeys going on there that you're unaware of. So yeah, true. exactly. You know, it's so true. So going through the whole fertility testing, pro the, the whole process, did you learn anything? Was it eye-opening? Oh, so eye-opening. Like, the first thing I learned is that you can get a fertility diagnostic test at any age. So that's to get your AMH levels checked, your anti-malarian hormone, your follicle-stimulating hormone. Nobody told me that. We don't get that at our annual gynecological appointment. No. No. I also didn't know about male factor infertility mm -hmm. because women are the ones that are usually wearing the face of infertility. Yeah. And one of the things we should know is that one third of all infertility cases with somebody with sperm and somebody with eggs trying to conceive and it doesn't work is male factor. Oh. One third is female factor. And the rest of that is unknown reasons. So it's not just us. Yeah, it's everybody. We yes. yes. Now, I, this is what I love. When you sent, when you sent Nisi and I the invitation that you were throwing an egg shower. Yes. What is, and I, and I was like trying to get the gift. What is an egg shower? My egg shower. Okay, because I have spent thousands of dollars at baby showers. Yes. Celebrating everybody else's pregnancy. I love to do it, but wedding showers, engagement parties, the whole thing. But when I froze my eggs, Hallmark doesn't make a card to congratulate me for no, that. No, they don't. Evite doesn't have an IVF shower invitation. Yeah. So I thought, you know, people ask me all the time, how do you afford it? I said, throw yourself an egg shower and register at PayPal.com. Yes. Register at Venmo. And so, oh, here's the egg shower here. So these are all the, so what happened was, is Laurel Fertility Care yeah. in California, they partnered with me. We threw this great egg shower. We gave away two free egg freezing cycles. Wow. To that's women. expensive. It, it's 15000 plus dollars. Yeah. Plus one year of storage. So I'm so grateful to my friends at Laurel Fertility. These are my black fertility advocate sisters, Regina Townsend, Coach Jesse, that's Kristen from K Foundation. There are so many people out here. And we wanted to celebrate 
people on the journey. They're all I love this, an egg shower to raise that money. Yes. But also, now you said that freezing up your eggs freed you up. So there was <coughs> so girl, you know, now I date with, you know, intention. <laughs> and I am your friend. <laughs> okay, there's no ring on this finger. But yes, it freed me off because the pressure was off of me. Yeah, yes. You know, and the need to say, could I make it work? Now I'm dating like, are you the husband and the father of my child? Yes, yes, girl. I took control of my fertility future so that when I meet my husband, I can say I'm baking a lasagna and I got eggs in the freezer, so we good. <laughs> my love thank you so much for being here and Kelly is co-hosting Resolve's Night of Hope Gala tonight so to see how you can live stream it because it will be great go to SherryShowTV.com and I want to say Niecy Nash's sister and secret keeper we got you we love you